G'day, I'm Scott McGregor. Welcome to my adventures down the line. Today, I'm off on a different sort of journey. A journey back in time. Exploring some of Australia's earliest and most famous railways. We're going to head west from the grand port city of Melbourne, along Australia's great southern coastline. Being an island, most of this country's railways meet the sea. And we're going to track down some of the most spectacular, travelling all the way in style. In order to start our story in Melbourne, we've got to get there first. So, I'm catching the Overnight Express. Thankfully though, they've got a sleeping car attached. Here we go, 25, 26, excellent. Sleeping compartments, they're so compact and neat. Basically all you need, really. The bunk folds down here, nice and comfy. We've got a shower and toilet just in there. I guess the only thing I'm missing is the wood panel charm of a nice old heritage carriage. Anyway, we can be guaranteed of some quality shut-eye here so we can wake up bright and fresh in a brand new city. What are you doing, mate? I don't know. It's your dream. How are you, Scott? Mr. McGregor, do you think we can get this train away? We're just about due. Yeah. Thank you. Puffing Billy departs Emerald at 8.10. All stations Port Melbourne. Arriving Flinders Street Station at 10.45. 18 first class passengers. 20 second class passengers. 16 tons of hardwood. 27 articles of luggage. Next service to Port Melbourne is at 11.25. there. Good sleep. Amazing dreams. Oh, 
cool, crisp morning greets me at Spencer Street Station in downtown Melbourne. You should follow your dreams, they say. Well, after last night's, I know exactly where I want to go. The Dandenong Rangers, and one of Australia's most treasured trains. All right. Where else would you expect me to start my adventure? Um, the guys are just doing it. Oh, hello, you're all set up. Hey, <laughs> this is good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We'll see you. Every child in Victoria has ridden on Puffing Billy. And if they haven't done it for real, well, they've dreamt about it. Over a century ago, Victoria set up four narrow gauge railways. But by 1953, Puffing Billy was the only survivor, and his future didn't look good either. The government talked about closing the line, but Puffing Billy had captured too many hearts and already had a huge legion of supporters. Some 14,000 of them put their names to a petition 200 metres long and took it into the state parliament. Puffing Billy was saved, and now over a quarter of a million people travel on this picturesque track every year. Well, so have I. Which probably makes me an honorary Victorian. For a short while, anyway. Well done. Thanks, Jeff. See ya. I've always had a soft spot for Melbourne. Vibrant, sophisticated. A city where the past sits very comfortably with the bustle of the modern world. This is probably Australia's most famous railway station. A meeting point for millions of Melburnians over the years. <laughs> See under the clocks, they say. This landmark building was built in 1910 on the site of Australia's first mainline railway, which ran from here down to Port Melbourne and was built in 1854. And I reckon a great way to glimpse a little bit of what Melbourne's all about is to trace the route of this historic line. The line left Flinders Street Station and crossed the Yarra River right here on an old wooden trestle bridge, which was replaced some years later by this majestic iron beauty. This is where we pick up the original part of the line and we can ride the rails again because it's been incorporated into Melbourne's world famous tram system. And our destination? Port Melbourne on Port Phillip Bay. Once the hub of shipping and rail trade for the new colony of Victoria. This is what it was all about meeting up with ships from all over the world. Trains fully laden, shunting onto the wharf, bringing their rich produce from the new colonies. Wheat, wool, gold. Whilst other trains departed, filled with the hopes and dreams of new settlers. So with a few hopes and dreams of my own, it's time to head west and leave a big smoke behind. All clear, please. We're riding through the heart of Victoria's western district pulled along by one of West Coast Rail's powerful 1950s B-Class locos. How long have you been driving? 22 years. Yeah, I was on the electric range for there, 16. Right, OK. I've been through back here. Just coming back at the... Yeah. This is a trip to sort of learn the road, is it? Yeah. Coaster ride here, isn't it? Like this. 
Curdie's river line ran from Camperdown to Timboon through the majestic Hatesbury Forest. There are no more trains these days, but look at this marvellous old bridge. They don't build them like this anymore. I'm meeting up with two blokes who've got a real passion for this line. Len Fay, one of the last drivers, and Alan Kerr, chairman of the local committee, which has plans to breathe new life into it. So, Alan, she was a fairly controversial project right from the beginning, wasn't it, this railway line? Oh, yeah. Uh, the government of the day in the colony was running out of money. It needed to service the new industries of timber and uh, agricultural production here in the south. Uh, and uh, the argument was, where do they actually put the thing and what are they going to pay for it with? Right. <laughs> because it wouldn't have been an easy line to build, would it? No, well, with 34 bridges and 80-odd culverts on the thing, uh, the terrain is steep, it was covered with trees, and the only way to build it was sweat and determination. There's no right. modern machinery then. What about driving it? Len? Yeah, it was rather difficult. <laughs> was it? Yeah, it was wet and always wet. And yeah. You had trouble getting up the hill and you had trouble controlling it coming down. What about this beautiful old bridge? What was she like to drive well, it? It never ever let me down. <laughs> <laughs> right. This was the old Purdy siding here. Around here would have been the township. It stretched down here to the hall. General store, pool hall. Pool hall? Yeah, pool hall. Den of iniquity. The den of iniquity? <laughs> <laughs> to keep the memories alive, they're creating a 22 mile rail trail here for walking, cycling, and horse riding. It's a great plan, but there's still a stack of work to do. <laughs> now I know why they got me to do this. Right. Away we go. Alan, this is a gorgeous little run through here. This is the most magnificent part of the whole line through here. And the, the reason for this bush being preserved is the preservation of this line. But what's the plan of the rail trail? What's the idea? Basically taking the rail trail, the rail line was originally put up uh, to service the new industries in the south. Uh, this line is now being recycled, if you like, uh, to pick up the new industries of recreation and tourism yes. so that people can just basically enjoy what you're seeing here. Nice old bridge, guys. Yep. I Good suppose fun. you want me to get a bit of locomotion happening again. Yeah, hey? Steve. More steam. <laughs> whoosh, whoosh. So what was it like bringing steam trains up this line, Len? It was very hard to get up that line because they used to slip on the track up here and no one could work out why. And we found out that it was the eucalypt trees shedding their eucalyptus. And we'd come to a standstill and then we'd tell the powers that be and they wouldn't believe us. They sent an expert down to have a look at it. And, and he came up with that, the same conclusion that we did. <laughs> well, I've never heard that before, mate. Eucalyptus oil stopping trains. Yeah. <laughs> I think we got a runaway train here, Ian. Hold her, hold There's a railway line here somewhere, boys. I found it. Have you? Here it is. There we go. <laughs> it's like buried treasure, this stuff. This is petrified wood, this tree. Beautiful. Get him out. Straight over the edge, eh? Let her go. Yeah. <laughs> nice and slippery. <laughs> oh, boy. That was hard work. <laughs> a bit of work clearing a <laughs> rail line. Yeah. I'll tell you what, you're right there, Len. Especially when you're easily cutting those blanks with blokes. Oh, yeah, you mongrels, <laughs> eh? <laughs> Look who's here. Where have you been, Ian? I've been sitting down. <laughs> oh, nice. Well, I'll tell you what, mate. We rolled this thing all the way down the hill. How are we going to get it back up? My secret. And very Wouldn't thankful like for Ian's secret I am hill. too. <laughs> now if the Camperdown to Timboon line had been completed, it would have arrived at Port Campbell, a small fishing village some 14 miles further south. But the government ran out of money, so it was never built. I guess you can't have everything, but what the people of Port Campbell do have just down the road, 
is a visual feast. Some of the most stunning seascapes in the whole of Australia. Glorious, isn't it? Mind you, if you'd been an early settler coming to Australia by ship, these cliffs would have been the last thing you'd have wanted to see. It's okay today, pretty calm. But the Great Southern Ocean can be a real beast. Famous for being one of the most treacherous stretches of water in the world. You see, there's nothing between here and the Antarctic to break the weather. And it's not unusual to see 20-foot waves and 50-knot winds buffeting the coast. It can get a lot worse. Victoria's coastline has claimed over 700 ships, most of them along here. They don't call it the shipwreck coast for nothing. One of the most famous is the story of the Loch Ard. She left England on the 2nd of March, 1878, with a complement of 54 passengers and crew. She'd been sailing for 80 long days and only had one day left to travel to reach Port Melbourne. But on that fateful night, there was a huge swell and a thick blanket of fog covered this coast. But what brought the Lockhart unstuck was the ship's compass, which was giving an incorrect reading. And as she rounded the point here, she struck a submerged reef. And with the waves smashing against her, she began to break apart. Waves swept across the decks and flooded the cabins. The mast came crashing down in a shower of rocks and shattered timber. Passengers clung to one another in terror, and their cries were lost in the howling wind and rain. One passenger, Eva Karma, and an apprentice crewman, Tom Pierce, were the only survivors that night. Time to get back on board and head on down to the next town, Warrnambool, another old port with salt in its veins. important commercial centre for the surrounding farming district. There are lots of well-preserved old buildings and churches. It's the sort of place where you can spend an afternoon just wandering around. Nothing I like better. It's also in a perfect position, curling around the shores of Lady Bay, with breathtaking views up and down the coast. But the lighthouse reminds us that we're still in the heart of shipwreck territory. And at least 29 wrecks lie at the bottom of Lady Bay alone. This is the breakwater, and you can still see the old Port Railway line, which was the crossover point between the railways and the shipping industry. In the 1880s, Warrnambool handled more cargo than Melbourne, with over 40 sailing ships anchored in Lady Bay at any one time. <laughs> it's a bit hard to imagine now. Walking around the cobbled streets in this early 19th century port, it's quite easy to feel as if you're back in a time when the tall ships were kings of the sea and the beat of the blacksmith's hammer echoed around the town. Good day to you, sir. Uh, no problem. That's three and six on the parcel for the lassie. Three and six, quarter past eight. Oh, good morning, sir. All right. One box. All right. This box? No charge, sir. <laughs> good morning, children. Good morning, Mr. Mr. Now, today, we'll be talking about the anatomy of a whale. <laughs> well. <laughs> Warrnambool also boasts an impressive collection of relics and maritime treasures. Remember the tragic wreck of the Lockhart? Well, this magnificent porcelain peacock was part of its cargo. It was made by Mitten in the 1870s, and it's believed to be the only one of its kind in existence. It was found on the beach, still in its original packing case. How it wasn't smashed to pieces, we'll never know. It's worth $2 million, which makes it Australia's most valuable shipwreck treasure. It's time to leave Victoria now and cross into South Australia 
and a little railway I know that's bringing new life to the old broad gauge lines of the limestone coast. Meet Bill Towner, limestone coast railway volunteer and engine driver. And Joy Towner, volunteer guard, who just happens to be married to Bill. They're a pretty talented bunch around here. Bill's not only the first volunteer to become a driver, but in the evenings he raises hell round the district with his two-piece band that goes by the name of the Ford. Now, they've got a gig on tonight down at the Tantanula Hotel. It's about 30 k's down the line here. And yours truly has been roped in to be the road. Run beautifully, don't they? Oh, of course they do. No, great, great vehicles they are. Yeah. How did the Limestone Coast Railway get started? Well, uh, probably about five, six years ago, a couple of uh, couple of us got together over a couple of drinks and uh, said we'd like to be able to save the rail infrastructure that had been uh, put in mothballs for a while. So we held a public meeting and uh, formed the Railway Society. Combo, mate. You're, you're a musician by night yeah, that's and a bit right. of a train buff in the daytime. Yep. Yeah. So how does that work? Oh, well, it works great because, I mean, there's two great loves of my life is uh, railways and music, so they combine together very well. Well, yeah. well here, yeah. here, mate. So, Joy, how is it being the train guard? Very good, actually. It's a great experience. Now, this is a husband and wife team That's operation. Right. It's fairly unusual. Well, I guess it is, but uh, it's unfortunate that uh, um, a lot more people don't get involved because it's something that we can do together. We always love trains, and I came in later on the, onto the scene, and I guess it's a case of love Bill, love his trains. <laughs> is that right? That's right. Well, Scott, here we are, mate. Well done, mate. Well done. We'll get the gear across the hotel. Yeah, thank you. OK. Yeah, good on you. Gee, they're making good use of the roadie today. Testing, testing. One, two, two, two. How's that sound, Bill? Yeah, good. Thanks, Scott. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Yeah. Ah, Mark. Hello, Scott. How you yeah, going? good, mate. Can I have a pale ale? Sure, can, yeah. bud. Good stuff, fellas. How's it going? Good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Flat chat, mate. Flat, flat chat. Yeah, setting up for the band tonight. There you go. Yeah, great. Put no it on worries. the tab. No worries at all, Thirsty mate. work, mate. See ya. Hey, how you doing? Oh, great. Right, now tell me, what's this Tantanula tiger business that's going on here? That's that tiger over there. You right. actually find him. Well, June told me the tale, yeah, how back in 1884, a, a couple of tigers tiger escaped from a circus. The for years, they were blamed for killing sheep. On then on one day, a local boy Russian shot one. On Only it wasn't a tiger, but a stowaway from a shipwreck. In the cargo. What is it? It's actually been DNA'd eight years ago. It's a Syrian wolf. When his daddy passed away Last night in his bedroom I heard him pray No, mommy, don't you worry I'll be in daddy's head And we'll be waiting together When you join us up there
Good on you, Bill. Well done, mate. I'll <laughs> see ya. Good on you. Oh, dear. <laughs> Having survived my night in Tantanula, I'm heading north now to Border Town and a rendezvous with Australia's pioneer of intercapital rail travel, the Overland. This is the main line between Melbourne and Adelaide. And here we are at Border Town. The old station's seen better days. Border Town's right on the border between South Australia and Victoria. Now, there's a surprise. My train's not due in till late at night or early in the morning, depending on which way you look at it. So I've got a bit of time on my hands. Well, I reckon that tiger beer must be kicking in. White kangaroos? Who ever heard of such a thing? Maybe they're just not well, feeling a bit off colour. The railways came to Border Town in 1883. It's not a scheduled stop anymore. But the train will pick you up if you ask them nicely. Funny thing, I wonder where everyone else is. Got to be a queue somewhere. Overland links Melbourne and Adelaide. But I'm not city bound tonight. I'm just popping down the track a bit to another place I really want to see. And this is it Murray Bridge. The Murray River is our ticket to the Flurio Peninsula and a magnificent steam journey. But this time it's not pistons, ah, but day. paddles. Right on board the Oscar W. Excellent. Well, come on up. Good. Hey, <laughs> how are you? How are you going? Before railway lines began to cross the country, paddle steamers like the Oscar W toiled up and down Australia's biggest river. The trip to Goolwa from Murray Bridge takes around six hours. And I can't think of a more relaxing way to mosey on down to the coast. How's it going, Skipper? Good. Great, mate. So the old Oscar W. She's a fine vessel. She's lovely. She was uh, she's built in Echuca. This is around the turn of the century, and um, she's had quite a bit of restoration done to her. She's operated wholly and solely by the um, the friends of the Oscar W. Volunteers right. working out of Goolwood. She's owned by the Alexandrina Council. Well, what's she like to handle? You're on the wheel a fair bit. It's lovely, it's like a big lever. Have a go. Just remember that you've got very gentle. Yeah, it's chain drive, so it's pretty hard. That's why you have a, a big wheel. And so she takes lever. a while to respond, does she? When Absolutely. You, when you've got a big wheel like this, you feel like you, you, you should have an 800 foot of ocean liner behind you. Yeah, nice. No, no, this is. Iceberg dead ahead! <laughs> Too late. Right now, <laughs> <laughs> I had my little Titanic fix, excellent, mate. I'm over excellent. it now. Hey, Rolly. Man, how are we going? What a great run, mate. It's fantastic, isn't it? She's doing well. Gee, oh. She cruises along nicely. She's good. Was she pretty busy in a heyday? What, what was the it like? The trade was really busy, of course. The expectations were that this was going to be the Mississippi of Australia. And um, it, it was short-lived, but for a period of time there we had over 300 boats and barges plying the river. Is that right? Steaming, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. The railways seemed to play an integral part in the riverboat trade. They really played an important part originally because initially they supported the trade. Uh, but then eventually they were the decline of it. And of course it all started really down at Goolwa where we're heading for, uh, because that was the first, 1854, the first um, trail, rail link to the sea from the river in Australia. In fact, it's the first rail in Australia. The old port railway line between Goolwa and Victor Harbour is now home to Steam Ranger, and a trip so close to the coast 
you can almost touch the ocean. Thanks, mate. If you hurry, you'll just make the next train. All right, I'll go for it. Hold the train. I'm coming. I'm coming. Just in time. Well done, eh? Hey guys. Um, Scott's my name. Hello Scott, Ian's my name. How are you? Excellent. Now look, I know you volunteer groups are all the same. You're always looking for a spare pair of hands, right? Yeah. Well, I'm well qualified. I drive, I fire, I look after trains. Is there anything I can help you with today? Well, it just so happens the guards had to knock off. Well, you're kidding. And yeah, we're short of a guard. Oh, so uh, if you'd like to be honorary guard for the rest of the day, I think it'll be work out well. Well, that'd be an honour. I'd love all to. Right. I think we'd better go and get your uniform, mate. done okay as a guard because they've given me a promotion. Head to the depot in the morning, said Ian. Prepare the loco for the first run of the day. Now there's a man who spots talent when he sees it. Right. Well, that's her. Nice and ready for the crew. Depot. Your train control. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, just give me the details. What have we got? Train order number 3551 from Goolwa to Victor Harbour with tourist train. So that doesn't go for an hour. Does that mean the track's free to Watson's Gap now? It is. Righto. Um, that's great, mate. OK, thanks very much. Ian told me that Watson's Gap Bridge is really special. Seems an absolute shame to miss it. Look, I could be out there and back. They wouldn't even know. <laughs> right. Fire's up. Yep. Steam's up. Excellent. Right. Let's go. Chillbridge. He was right. What a spot. Oh. 
Well, I think I know where you've been. Well, mate, you told me Watson's Gap was going to be beautiful this morning, and it was great. Well, this is really going to cost you, though. Fair cop. You got this entire frame done, Ron? Of course I do. What do you think you're here for? Ian sentenced me to 10 hours community service in the Steam Ranger workshops. Well, hardly a punishment, I thought. Yep, there you until go. I That's saw how many good. jobs they'd lined up. Got that open. OK, Scott, in you go. Hey, in there. In there, yeah. Hey. We're going to shut the door, too. Hey, go easy. I'm claustrophobic. <laughs> what are we going to do? Oh, we're going to put spark arresters in there. Spark arresters, right over. Here you go, Jeff. Thank you, Daryl. Just a little bit more. Okay. Truth be told, I could have happily done another 10-hour stretch in the Steam Ranger workshops. But it's time to travel again. I'm due in Port Adelaide, where I'm going to hitch a ride to the Eyre Peninsula. Port Adelaide is South Australia's principal shipping port. Its commercial peak was back in the 1880s but the whole area has been beautifully restored and the Victorian buildings are as impressive today as they were back then. The railway system on the Air Peninsula is an isolated one, not linked to anywhere else in the nation. Now it has its terminus in Port Lincoln and I could drive there in about six hours. We're taking you across to Port Lincoln and we're gonna stop up. But I'm opting for a more traditional passage. True to his word, Dennis had his mate pick me up halfway across the Spencer Gulf. And here we are in Boston Bay, the entrance to Port Lincoln. Boston Bay is three and a half times larger than Sydney Harbour, and it's home to the biggest tuna fleet in the Southern Hemisphere. Great trip, appreciate it. See ya. See ya, South Coast. Over 90% of the nation's tuna comes from these waters. And with the Japanese prepared to pay a small fortune for best quality fish, it's no surprise that Port Lincoln is one of the wealthiest addresses in the country. But the fishing industry is still a baby when you compare it to the wheat. Wheat's been farmed on the Eyre Peninsula for over a century, and it couldn't have made it without the railways. The railways and the ports on the air they're inseparable. The first railway line was opened in 1907. The early pioneers sent their grain by rail to Port Lincoln, where it was unloaded by nuggety men called lumpers. Then the shunting horses came into play. Gentle giants who could turn on a sixpence and line up the rail cars with uncanny precision. The scene might be completely different here today, but the bond remains between the railways and the ports. In fact, the railways rely on this maritime connection for its very survival. But with road transport breathing down its neck, you've got to wonder how long this unique little railway's got left. So while the line's still with us, I've planned a little tour. Not by train, but by vintage section car, the Rolls-Royce of track vehicles. And I've conscripted a few locals as guides. A bunch of blokes who'd never miss a chance to ride this <laughs> line. <laughs> These are great. Our beasts of burden, eh? Yeah, yeah well, morning. you guys are riding on this one here. Hey, I'll go with you, Stan, is yes, that right? Yep. Yeah. Yes, you'll come with me. Yeah. We're taking the one up and there. And you're taking the red one. Yep. Terrific. Yes. You put your bag right. here. Scott, we're ready to go. OK, mate, I'm here. Not far behind yep. you. Hold on, boys. The mail and your morning tea. The mail? <laughs> We've got a delivery job to do, Stan. And there's some goodies. Oh, okay? thanks, Kitty. Good on you. You're welcome. See ya.
So these are the salt lakes, eh? Yes, this is the Kapini salt lakes all through here, acres of it. Where's the water? End of summer, all evaporated. It just left all the mud and the slush behind. I guess you blokes aren't short of a bit of salt for your fish and chips. No, <laughs> no you can bring your fish and chips out here and get salt from the lake and put on them and eat them on the shore here. <laughs> Getting fresh water has always been a problem on the air. Looking at the landscape, it's actually hard to believe it's such a prosperous wheat belt. But if you need any confirmation, it's there at every turn. The towering wheat silos tell their own story. This looks handy, this tent here. What's the idea? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Scotty, did you have a good trip out the track today? That was a terrific run, I tell you. Oh, well, what have we got here? Here's your digs here, look at this. Hey, look at this. My digs? You're kidding. Oh, wow, this is great. Why net in bed and all, all laid on. What a beauty. Yeah. Hey, you've done well, mate. Well, I hope so. Not only do you drive trucks, but you set up yeah. a good camp for us. Well, I feel That's very right. at home away from home here. All right. So what do you need now? Well, I reckon we need a, a fire and a cup of tea. Oh, what do you right. think, mate? Well, okay. I think that's a great idea, Stan. Yeah. 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 Right. You're always thinking ahead, Stan. That's what I like that's about you, buddy. Me. There's a tripod from Billy. Is there one there? Oh. See if you can put that on there, Murray. Across. So Murray, tell me a bit about your interest in the Eyre Peninsula. Well, I, uh, I do a lot of research into the railways here and uh, been a railway enthusiast for years. I'm involved in the museum, I do restoration. The two little trolleys you've seen on the track today, they've, I restored those. Uh, got them up and running, had them donated. Well, you did a top job, mate. I congratulate you. Stan, uh, you, you've spent a bit of time around these parts, haven't you, mate? I was a ganger here in uh, 68, I think it was, mm -hmm. till, till 80. So tell me, mate, what we're having here tonight, is that bringing back any memories yes. for you? We had our campfires here, and we lived here, right in this spot. The poor old shovel's got a bit of a workout, yeah, mate. Not only did cooked, they have to lump coal. Yes, we even cooked chops on them. Yeah, I, think I could have yarned with the fellas all night, but after a big day and a hearty plate of chops, my ganger's tent began to beckon. See you in the morning, yeah, okay, mate. Have a good sleep. Good on ya. The guys decided they'd rough it. At home. turned out to be a bunch of netballers, so it's not all bad. Strange though, no netball courts here. Seems I'm needed for a special mission. Right. Well, I'm really excited about this, girls. They've brought me to Cummins for the sixth annual Kalamazoo Classic. A day of Kalamazoo races and rail-related competitions, some more serious than others. Kalamazoo's are the hand pump carts that old railway fitness got around on. An engineless version of the section car, really. And what a perfect spot, with tracks running right through the centre of town. Cummins was made for it. It's the mixed open. Is it? Ah, ah. And some looking trophy. So we've got the male open, yes. female open. 
This is the handicap. This is the media challenge. Ah, the fastest time. That is a beauty. If we can't no, go for that one. That's a handsome looking trophy. That's, that's, the, that's the one. Yes. Right. Well, bit of time to kill before picking up a trophy at the finish line. Let's see what hey, else we can get right. into. <laughs> All right, beat that, mate. That's what I want to see. On the further side of that mark, mate, is the better one. Hey! Hey! This looks like fun, too. Chance for a bit of a lie down. How's she go? You reckon, reckon you might be in your stay, 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 Oh, nice heat. The tension's building. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Here we go. 12, 3, 5. A good metre short, mate. A metre short. Bad luck, Bad luck Snake. Snake. Well Gee, if Snake can't luck, beat the leader, what am I going to do? Uh, Could be a bit of an I've got a plan. Time to argue oh, for a little wait for age system. substitution. Here you go, boys. Up your jump. Up your jump. Up your jump. They're my team. All you big ones off, and I'm ready to push, Georgina, when you are. You are ready. OK. We need every single person here to chant Scott. <laughs> Scott. <laughs> Scott. Go easy. OK. The are pressure's ready? on. Are we ready? Scott! 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 Keep going! Keep going! This could be a new world record! Not as far as the women! Ha ha ha! Right, the old out, Stewie! 8, 8, 60! I'll take a bit off! Oh well, not quite the winner. But then I was saving myself for bigger things. The moment had arrived. Silence descends on the crowd as we make our way to the starting line for our date with destiny. The Magnificent Five march to glory. Will we draw the fast track? We can actually go. Or yep. what are you calling? the slow one? Yes. 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 Good luck, good luck, good luck, good luck. That's what I call a secret weapon. My God, what do they call you, Incredible Hulk? It's all in the start. The race is won or lost in the first couple of pumps. Look here. Now they call this bloke Baby, eh? What are your chances, Baby? Hey, look at this, look at this. Oh, I don't know, girls. Are you sure you got the right bloke? No, we've got, got no chance. Winners are grinners, they say. But you couldn't wipe the smile off my face, even if the trophies didn't come our way this time round. There you go. Cheers, gang. <laughs> Just for the day. record, though, we definitely had the slow track. Well, that's it for another Cummins Kalamazoo Classic. I've had a top day. And I reckon it doesn't get much better when an old railway town like this gets a chance to kick up its heels and celebrate. I had so much fun. I'm going to get into trading for next year's event. See you down the line. <laughs>